All right, so welcome back to one. In this video, we are going to detect and perform incident response to an unauthorized user activity. Okay, this is going to be completely hands on. And this is this will be very interesting video because we are not going to use any external tool. We'll be doing everything without using any additional tool. We'll be using the native Linux uh, commands, utility commands. Okay, so we will start with first understanding the suspicious activity. We are going to detect it. Then we are going to perform incident response, wherein we will first start with performing the security investigation. Uh, we are going to look at how to how to uh, spot the issue and then what are the steps that we could take to maybe con uh, to contain or eradicate the, uh, uh, the the threat or maybe remediation steps and at the end we will talk about what are the different remediations uh, I'm sorry the recommendation that we can uh, you know submit for preventing the similar incidents in the future. Okay, so the step number one is detect unauthorized access. Okay, um, so to detect the unauthorized access, there are a couple of commands that we can run. But remember one thing, uh, in the real world, you might be having hundreds or thousands of servers, Linux servers, uh, any any distribution Linux server. You can't go on each and every servers just to know if you got a new unauthorized access to the machine. No, you, you are not going to do that. You can't practically do that, in fact. So technically for detection, we use some sort of a tools or some, uh, you know, software like file integrity monitoring when a certain file will get modified. OK, for example, the first thing that we verify is slash etc slash passwd. This is where the user account are actually being stored. So I can show you. Uh, at the bottom, you see these are all known users, right? But at the bottom, you see a malicious user, okay? And he already in the machine. You can see on the other window, the user, the malicious user is already having an access, right? Now, the point is what I'm trying to tell you is in the real world, we are not going to go on every server and look at if the user is in the machine or not. We are going to use some sort of a software or packages to see if this specific file has been modified and then we go to the system and then we start our investigation. So technically, this is not a detection. This is basically a verification step, which also can be included in the investigation. OK, but I hope you got the point. Now, first thing that we do is we look at the slash etc slash speed pass wd to see if the user has been added so you can see the malicious user has been added in, in the machine and this is uh, his uh, or her home directory okay now once you see the user is in or user account has been created it can be created by the software as well right so let's ver verify a few more things let's verify what's the password status really looks like so we can run pass wd minus s and then malicious user okay this will give you an idea uh, this this you see this this gives you an idea about something when the when the last time the user account was created what's the validity and everything i think this is not clear uh, let's use another command which is change command and minus l then you can enter the username and now this looks quite good, right? So the same thing, but in a different format, you see the last password change is December 19. Password expires, never. Password inactive, never. Password expires, account expires, sorry, it's never, okay? Number of days of warning. So the account, uh, the maximum number of days between the password change is almost infinity. So this is the password status we see at this moment, right? Now let's validate a few more things to identify what's the most recent login the account has done. So we can run last log and then we can run the username, malicious user, uh, or maybe we can just say check for all the user in fact. So you can see if you just enter last log, you can see the last log of all the user. You can see none of the user actually access except me, which is root. And another one is the malicious user who recently accessed the machine. So this means this is this is uh, this account is not just being created, but someone actually accessed it. 
and you can also see that on my another tab the user is still in the account right now you can also review the last activity by last and username as well so you can run the last and malicious user and then you can see uh, what, what activity have, did, have been done uh, been done by the user as well so you can see the the user access from this specific ip address and uh, he's still logged in okay and this was the last time he logged in, in into the machine okay so uh, you can also validate the current user as well by who and then you can see these are all the user who are currently access now this can be used if let's say you have a doubt that there could be more than one user in the machine okay so now this confirms that something has been changed there is an unauthorized user in the machine at this moment so this completes our initial primary investigation or a detection phase so now we can confirm yes he is in now in the next step we will do the investigation right so now let's start our investigation okay so let's investigate for the suspicious activity first of all let's understand what are the different commands executed by this user called malicious user for this you can use cat or maybe nano command as well and you can go to slash home the home directory of this user and look at the bash file bash history file this consists of all the commands executed by this user you can see uh, echo uh, this these are the command well nano you can use it to edit but if you use the cat uh, you can simply see the output like this right so you can see this is the malicious user this is the command executed by the user cat command uh, uh, you know some pass wd to update the password so it looks like the user uh, you know created certain file in the temporary directory tm directory so let's go into this directory slash t so there is a file you can look at the content of this file as well maybe you can use malicious text and the content is this is malicious of course this is just for a testing purpose so this is how you can locate uh, something suspicious in your network so the based on the commands that has been entered by this user okay so this is how you can investigate the problem you can understand what is the overall uh, impact so looks like the user just did this this malicious user just this this much of uh, entered this much of a command so the impact is not uh, so much at least based on this specific user account okay so this completes our investigation now next step would be to respond to this incident respond to this attack so now that we know that uh, malicious user uh, you know created a new file added some uh, you know some data in the file and the user account has been created as well so and the malicious user account has been created as well and the user logged in a couple of times now it's time for incident response okay this is time to uh, eradicate the threat from the network so the most most quick thing that you can possibly do because i know that user is already logged in user is currently in the system at this moment because you can see if you run who you can see the system user is still in the network and of course if i go in my another tab i can see the user is still in the machine right so what i can do quickly is to you know uh, i you know terminate the user session and to do that i can use pkill option pkill ca command minus u username which is malicious user the moment you hit enter the session will be terminated and you can see that here perfect can you see this the session has been terminated but the user can reinitiate the connection and come back just like this so this is not a permanent solution next what we can do is we can also disable the user command by pass wd minus l and malicious user okay so this will lock the user account for further login okay that's the one way or the best option is we delete the user account itself permanently by user del minus r malicious user you next you can uh, you can delete the file as well you remember the this user has created a file which is which was there in slash tmp this file right 
uh where is that yes this is the one right so we can remove this file malicious user hit enter and the file will be removed so that's how you perform the incident response and clean your machine Okay, so now it's time for the uh, verifying the system integrity to validate if everything is good to monitor all the files and the user accounts. So for this, let's first start with uh, if anybody else uh, logged into the machine other than of course me, which is root. So currently, yes, I, I'm the only one in the machine now. So root is there. Next, we need to look at if the any the these uh, malicious user exists or any other unauthorized user exists. Okay, so you can do cat slash etc slash passwd and uh, yeah, I mean I don't see any other user, especially that malicious user as well. So that's all good. Uh, you can also validate uh, the file as well, of course we were validated earlier but you can again go back and see if the file exists okay um you can also validate some uh, uh some some uh, authentication logs related to that user by looking at the authentication logs uh, auth dot log sorry so you can run cat slash where in the log directory so in the where log directory we have auth dot log and then you can grab uh, this specific user, uh, which was malicious user, malicious under, underscore user, right? Hit enter. And uh, this is the user. We actually deleted the user as well earlier. So the user account was deleted. This is the command. And this is all the attempt to change the password as well, right? So this is all good. All right, so once you have verified this system integrity, now let's work on reporting. This is very important, guys. You have to make sure you document properly. This is the sample incident, uh, you know, post incident report. You can mention the time and date and a one liner about what was happened. Then uh, incident detail about what action have you taken, uh, you have taken so far. So with the unusual login activity detected from a specific IP address. So you remember, in fact, whenever you do the who, you get the idea about from where the user logged in. So that could be that that's something which you could really take a help from. And uh, you can say multiple failed login attempt or unusual login activity review. Uh, you reviewed auth log. You looked at the compromise account. Uh, what action have you taken so far? Sorry. So this is uh, respond to the incident. So this is where you have to mention different actions that you have taken. So you can just mention uh, different steps. And then what uh, action have you taken for system integrity check? This is just for example, guys. Okay. This is this is just for a the sample. I have mentioned that. You can, of course, do a few more things related to system restore, last known, uh, secure backup if needed. So you can do that. You can also validate the kernel level uh, check as well. Finally, for reporting, you need to mention the date and time of the incident with a, de a detail affected system, your affected system, the system IP address. You can run if config. And uh, yes, so you need to install net tools for that. And once you do that, now you can run the if config and you can get the IP address of this machine, right? And finally, you can enter and specify the root cause. What was the root cause behind this incident? All right, finally, let's talk about the recommendation. Let's, uh, let's start with implementing the multi-factor authentication for all the accounts. But wait. Can we actually implement the MFA for all the machines in the Linux especially? Well, the answer is yes. There are multiple open source tools and uh, you can also integrate with uh, Google Authenticator as well to get the two factor authentication or, or one time password or, you know, uh, numbers as well. So that's pretty much possible. Um, there are different network access control mechanism as well which can be utilized and uh, we also have we also need to make sure we have a strong password policy with periodic rotations even if we don't have a strong i mean periodic rotation it's very very important to have a strong password policy in our case a new user account was created altogether 
but in most most of the cases or in uh, in in common scenarios the there there are cases of credential theft where the user account get compromised and um, you know threat actor get access to the machine as well right so that's the that's that's why the strong password policy is very very important next enable the enable and monitor ids system ids detect any suspicious activity into the network you can use different tools like surikata or snot ids both are open source snot is also available on the commercial license as well it's currently being managed by cisco you should also incorporate fem fem is the fem is the file integrity monitoring software with this whenever a uh, you know a specific or maybe critical file get modified you immediately get an alert you can also uh, you know fine tune it to avoid any false positive okay so there are multiple solution out there for this uh, we have ossec you can also use wazu or waza uh for file integrity check you can use audit you can use audit d uh where you can keep a track of certain accounts uh as well whenever certain file changes happen to a specific directory as well you can also get an alert with that okay now finally make sure you regularly update and patch all the system and softwares so that's again a very very important point